Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are gonna talk about some of the brand new perennials from Proven Winners for 2024. Now what I wanna do, I think there's like some 18 plants. I want to go through and talk about the ones that I've had a chance to grow already, at least for one season. Even planting them and getting a little bit of experience, it's really fun to talk about those types of plants. And then we'll go back through and talk about some of the ones that um, are coming out that I haven't tried yet. And there are a bunch of beautiful ones I think you guys are gonna be excited about. The first one on my list is the silver lining artemisia or artemisia depending on where you're from i think the common name is white sagebrush but this particular variety the silver lining is a blend of two different varieties to get the best leaf shape which they're broadly dissected they're really interesting and the best growth habit the best thing about this one for me it's like a zone four through nine i think so really winter hardy but it's also just a great one to get that silvery blue color in a full sun area um, and it also can handle dry conditions. So it's kind of a problem solving plant really. Now it doesn't grow super tall, like 12 to 16 inches. It can grow much taller or it will appear much taller if it flowers for you, but it's not really grown to be very uh, big or very vigorous in the bloom department, which is not why we grow Artemisia. So that's not a big deal, but I think it can reach upwards of like 30 to 36 inches tall with blooms. Uh, but yeah, it's not something I've experienced on it. And if if it did bloom for me, I would probably clip them off because I, plant, I planted mine at the edge of a border and I want it to maintain that 12 to 16 inch side of things. And it does spread out, like it can spread out 32 to 36 inches. So it's a really good uh, ground cover. I think the other fun thing about this one is that it's a really great one to use in containers as well. As just an alternative to like a sweet potato vine or a coleus, this one will be great for like pairing it with a James Britannia, I think would be awesome. Like the Safari Desk, I just talked about that one in another video, but it's got the beautiful like bright lavender flowers with the icy blue foliage would be so beautiful. And then like maybe like a red spike, like a Dracaena spike, that would be so pretty. We should try that this next year, but really good in containers and in the landscape. The next couple on my list are types of eucamus. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but it's a type of pineapple lily, which I have never grown before, but I planted for the first time this last summer. And I planted them sort of late in the season, so I can't really say that I have a lot of experience, but they are out there. They are a zone six through nine, which technically we've been moved up to a seven, so they should be great and should overwinter. Got down to like 18 last night. That's the coldest we've been so far, so they should be good. But these lilies, the first one's called Crowning Glory Princess Bride. They're so beautiful. I love the bloom color of this one in particular because it looks like, now I haven't seen the blooms in real life yet, but the blooms look like pineapples and uh, they kind of come out this yellow yellow color and then they they fade to kind of a pink cream so they have a very tropical look to them and the leaves when they emerge they're very strappy thick leaves are kind of a burgundy color and then they fade to a green during the summer so I think it'll be a really fun one to see what happens this next year to see if they come back strong uh, and see if they lack our soil because this is a new experiment for us this one grows 18 inches tall and 24 inches wide and it's uh, supposedly that's a very compact size for this type of plant so it's easier to tuck in cl closer to the front of a border which is kind of what I did with mine and the other one is the crowning glory purple rain this one gets just a tiny bit bigger than the princess bride like 18 to 20 inches tall um, so maybe a couple more inches uh, taller than that one and then it may be a couple inches wider so not a huge difference but the difference to me well bloom color the purple rain has a purple bloom but the leaves maintain the dark purple color now when they come out in the spring they're very dark purple very beautiful and then they hold um, while the other one turns more of a green color they're both really pretty though and i'm excited to see what happens with them the next one is the fun and game capture the flag hookerella. I'm such a huge fan of hookerellas. They're a blend between a tiarella and a hookera. So you get a lot of the, the more vibrant hookera colors in a package that can handle really a lot more shade. Um, you get the really pretty kind of creamy colored flowers in the spring, but this one has kind of bright chartreuse yellow leaves with a dark amber veining in the center. And they're just beautiful. We got some this past summer and they're just massive. And uh, the leaf shape, it kind of has a maple looking leaf shape. And it's just so fun to see that in a shady bed. Their leaf canopy reaches about 10 inches tall, but when they're in bloom, they can be like 20 to 22 inches tall. That's how tall their bloom spikes will grow up. And then usually about like a 16 to 18 inch spread. I want to say mine are wider than that though. They seemed like 
20 inches at least. They were just these massive, huge plants. And they're a zone four through nine. The last one on my list that I have actually grown is the Sedum Rock and Grow Midnight Velvet. This one looks like the Back in Black Sedum and the Coral J Sedum had a baby to me. Uh, it's got more of an upright growth habit, like a little bit bigger than the coral jade, I think 22 to 26 inches tall, but the color, like the leaf color is a little bit more of a rosy red rather than that dark burgundy red, like the back and black. So it's got a little bit more like skewing toward coral jade. And then the buds are kind of a mauve color. Uh, when they're in bud form. They do open kind of red with a little bit of white, but they look kind of pink to me. Um, so they are beautiful. I love them in our landscape. I've got them planted in a couple of different locations um, that I'm excited to see how they do this next year. But sedum are just one of those wonderful plants that you can pop in. They don't want a lot of water. They never want to be fertilized, not even when we plant them. No biotone starter fertilizer for those plants. Um, they just, in, in full sun, they like the heat. And the only time of the year where they don't provide interest is that little window where you cut them back in the early spring and there's already little rosettes forming. So if you look down, you can see their beautiful structure, but it's just that brief period when they need to push their little growth up a little bit where you don't actually enjoy them. I mean, they hold up to snow uh, for the most part. They look beautiful with a layer of frost over them. I just feel like they're such a workhorse perennial in the garden and require so, so little uh, from me. And they're exceptionally winter hardy zone three through nine. Okay, so those are the new plants that I've had a little bit of experience experience growing. Uh, this next group, I have not had experience growing yet, but they're still really exciting. In fact, this first one is a Decadence Deluxe Periwinkle Popsicle Baptisia. I actually do have this one, but it's still in containers. It ran out of time. I did not get it in the ground, but it's a beautiful Baptisia. This one grows taller than it does wide, so it shows its undersides a little bit more than other Baptisias, which means it's really good for underplanting uh, because you don't have a lot of, you know, uh, bushy growth on the sides. So you can really like use it as a back plant, you know, to something else really beautiful. And this one has beautiful periwinkle blue flowers that are 16 inches. That's how tall their bloom panicles are. That's huge. And it does bloom later than other Baptisia, so it extends that season interest uh, for you. Just kind of as point of reference, if you've grown the lemon meringue variety, that one uh, has finished blooming long before the periwinkle popsicle, popsicle starts to bloom. So you can kind of stagger your Baptisia bloom season, which is really fun. They make for a really fun cut flower too, if that interests you. They grow four to four and a half feet tall and three to three and a half feet wide. Uh, and they are a zone four through nine. Next one is a Virginia called Peppermint Patty. And I have grown Virginia before, which is an evergreen perennial or a semi-evergreen perennial. It's a zone four through nine typically in the lower zones it gets a little bit more winter weary than it does in the higher end of things they stay a little bit nicer looking but it's an easy cleanup in spring and then they push new leaves um, this one grows like 22 inches tall so it sends up bloom stalks in the spring that start off green on the bottom and then they turn a rosy pink toward the top and then the blooms for a virginia are big like one and a quarter inch wide for an individual bloom. And you know, they have clusters of blooms on top of the bloom stock. And these are white with a pink center and then kind of like a pink star shape in the middle. They look very like delicate to me. I think I already mentioned they grow 22 inches tall, about 16 to 18 inches wide. And they are a zone four through nine. They do like a shade, part shade to shady location. Next, we have an addition to the Stand By Me Clematis line. So there's the Stand By Me, which is kind of a bluish purple. There's the Stand By Me Lavender, which is a lavender. And now there's a Stand By Me Pink Clematis. So this is a uh, bush type clematis. It's not a vining type. However, it does grow like 38 to 42, this variety at least grows 38 to 42 inches tall, and it does require support. So while it does form kind of a clump like a perennial does and if you plant a bunch of them together they will somewhat support each other they do look a heck of a lot better if you add some support um, so like some kind of a grow through ring uh, I've got some real pretty ring supports around mine uh, that I just leave up year round uh, just so I know that they're there so when the, the clematis grow up they have something to lean on uh, but they have a long bloom period it's usually sometime in May through I want to say into June, and then they do rebloom. And even after they are done reblooming, their seed heads are so beautiful. They look like, oh, I've taken some pictures and shared them before, but they're kind of like these wild little bright white, like cottony looking 
things. I don't, they add some really interesting texture and color to the fall and winter landscape. And the care for this type of clematis is really easy. They die all the way back to the ground every year. You cut them off at ground level and they grow back fresh. So there's no wondering. Clematis can be a little tricky, the vining type anyway, in that area. And they are a zone three through seven. Now we have three new varieties of daylily. The first one is called Blazing Glory and they have huge six inch kind of golden yellow flowers with a dark burgundy throat or center and then a dark burgundy kind of pickety edge and the difference between the edge of this one and a lot of the other cultivars out there is that this one doesn't uh, like it remains very consistent and very strong it doesn't bleed or fade it stays like it extends the whole edge of the petal and it really frames in that bloom this variety grows about 32 inches tall 18 to 24 inch spread and it's a zone three through nine and it is a repeat bloomer so it'll continue going through the season and supposedly it has a very nice fragrance so like I said I don't have any experience with this variety but fragrant day lilies oh there's something to be said about those oh they do smell good this next one I love the color of it's called blood sweat and tears so this one also has six inch flowers that start off kind of a dark raspberry pink and then they go into kind of a a rosy pink and then a white line and then into their yellow throat so it's a really pretty uh, like morph of color is that the right word that's not right word but anyway it changed variations of color down from the tip of the petal all the way down to the throat of the bloom they're also fragrant this one stays a little smaller than the last one 28 inches tall about a two foot spread zone three through nine uh, also fragrant oh and this next one it's got huge flowers eight inches it's called Persian Ruby so a deep burgundy color with yellow throat and their flowers are sort of spoon shaped uh, fragrant they grow about 30 inches tall two foot spread zone three through nine and I think they would be very much so a standout in the garden I said there were three varieties of day lilies there's actually four they're star of the north as well this one has five and a half inch or so pale yellow flowers with kind of a purpley red center and this one gets the tallest at 34 inches tall they're all right around the 18 to 24 inch wide side of things and they're all zone three through nine there's a new summerific hibiscus called all eyes on me which have massive eight inch flowers that almost appear double especially as they're kind of opening up and they're just like pure light pink with sort of a red center and they're a very compact type just so nice because some of the summerific uh, hibiscus get quite large uh, but this one stays about three and a half feet tall by three and a half feet wide i think the dark green of the leaves is a really pretty contrast to that kind of soft pure pink as well and they are a zone four through nine then we have a hosta that i'm so excited about called love story the color of this one is so pretty first off the leaves are quite long uh, and they're kind of a medium sagey green on the outside and then it moves into a chartreuse and then it moves from that to a white they're just very soft but very interesting looking in their variegation and this one will get like 42 inches wide that's big they grow about 14 to 16 inches tall at least their leaf canopy does and then it'll be taller with their bloom spikes which are white zone three through nine and the other thing about their leaves I almost forgot to mention is that they have kind of a they call it a pie crust edge it's like kind of this gentle wave there's a new luminary phlox variety called prismatic pink coming out they have bubblegum pink flowers with a dark center uh, they grow roughly like 34 inches tall 28 inches wide zone three through eight the thing I like about luminary flocks like I'm a huge fan I've got the, uh, the opalescence is my favorite variety and then backlight is really pretty as well um, and I've also got the there's another kind of violet colored one that we've got out there they perform so well but the thing that I like the most is that they are really um, resistant to powdery mildew some of the older varieties of flocks even in our dry climate would succumb to powdery mildew but this variety does not I mean I think you still they would still benefit from um, you know having enough airflow around them not being clustered in too close together as most plants do but I've not had any of my flocks succumb to any kind of issue like that which is so nice and these stay a little bit smaller than some of the uh, other varieties that get really tall and sometimes require staking these are just very um, like robust and very dense phlox plants and I would say they're a little bit later to bloom than some of the other varieties of phlox and then they kind of uh, you know go out of bloom and then ours always tend to rebloom uh, it always seems to have some sort of color on them throughout the season there are also two varieties of perennial primrose zone four through eight there's one called I think it's bouquet perfect blue ripples and mandarin uh, so I've never grown primrose as a perennial before but these are really pretty they grow about five to eight inches tall 10 to 12 inches wide and they're nearly 
sterile, their flowers are, which means they, the plant is putting far more energy into flower production than into seed setting seed. So you're gonna get a lot more color and it's just a really fun option for an early season color in a flower bed. I'd love to plant a drift of them and see how they do for us. Um, they should winter over just fine. It'd be interesting to see. They also can handle shadier spots, so that's another great thing. And the last one is an ornamental grass, a type of little blue stem called Prairie Winds Brush Strokes. Um, and this one stays like rigidly upright. It has powdery blue foliage that kind of turns to a beautiful burgundy blue in the fall. And this one, as opposed to some of the other varieties, has more of a skirt of foliage around the bottom, giving it a little bit more of a blousy full appearance. It also waits a little bit longer in the season to set its blooms, but it grows about three feet tall, two feet wide, so it's just a nice sized grass to pop into a sunny spot in your landscape, zone three through nine. If I was to pick a favorite, like of the ones that I've tried thus far, I would say the Midnight Velvet is on the top of my list, but I'm a huge fan of sedum. Uh, and then of the ones I haven't tried yet, I'm excited about that Love Story Hosta. I don't know what it is, just about the way it looks in the pictures, it looks like it might have a thicker leaf, which usually the thicker leaved hostas hold up to our environment better. So like windier areas, a little bit more heat, dry heat. Um, so I'm hoping that that one does really well here because I just love hostas. So I'm excited to try that. That has a beautiful color to it. Uh, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video going through some of the new plants for this next year to be looking out for. It's always exciting to talk about plants. It's one of my favorite things to do. So thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.